everyone, and welcome to the final part of our five-part guide series, where we cover how to play the basics of Imperator Realm. In today's video guide, we will take an in-depth look at all of the features included with the 1.5 Menander update. This free update is the largest yet to come to Imperator Realm, and in this video we will explore the large variety of new mechanics, updates, and quality of life improvements that are coming to the game. Let's get started by looking at Cultures, the first significant feature to receive a major overhaul in 1.5. There are a variety of new ways you can interact with Cultures in the Menander update. We will start our overview by checking out the Cultural Interface, a new addition that has replaced the previous Decision tab. In this menu, we can view the variety of various cultures present in our nation, with metrics including the happiness of our primary culture and the amount of classes and pops that belong to each cultural group. On the bottom half of this interface, we also have the ability to interact with specific cultures via the cultural decision mechanic. This new feature allows you to pass privileges for each of your nation's cultural groups, oftentimes increasing or decreasing their population's happiness in exchange for bonuses and modifiers. For example, some of these privileges allow you to increase a specific culture's integration speed, the ability to prosecute outside cultural characters more efficiently, or augment the productivity of their pop classes, and much more. But privileges are not the only cultural decision you can use to interact with your various cultures. The most important new mechanic in the Menander update is the ability to integrate foreign cultures and treat them as equals to your primary culture. Integrating another culture is possible by adjusting the civic rights of that culture to allow promotion up to the citizen or nobility class. Once you've granted this culture full civic rights, the process of integration begins, presenting your nation with events that force you to make concessions, like adopting a deity of that culture or forcing you to adopt one of their great families into your nation. While integration is ongoing, your nation will also suffer from a substantial penalty to stability. Once integrated, the culture can now promote their pops to all class levels, and are treated as if they were your primary culture. But there are drawbacks to this mechanic. Every additional culture that is integrated and has full civic rights will lower the happiness of all of your primary culture pops, including those that have already been integrated previously. In functional terms, this means that you'll have to decide between assimilating or integrating the cultures in your empire, but integration remains an excellent choice for larger cultures that would otherwise take too long to assimilate. The 1.5 Menander update also brings a whole host of fresh cultures and redesigns to pre-existing cultural groups. Western Europe's Celtic cultural group has added the Gallic and Panodian subgroup, the Scythian group has 10 new subordinate cultures, and the Indian region has been updated with the new Prakian and Atavi cultural groups. The former lands of Alexander the Great's empire have also been updated, with the Persian cultural group now consisting of Iranian, Anatolian, and Caucasian subcultures. Further to the south, the Egyptian cultural group has been redesigned completely, and contains the three new cultures of Bohiric, Fayumic, and Sahidic. One of the largest new features of the Menander update is a complete overhaul of the Greek Diodaki states, adding a slew of mechanics that improve the depth of gameplay in the region. The most visible change is the emergence of the Antagonid Kingdom, formerly known as Phrygia. The Antagonid Kingdom, along with their Diodaki rivals, now have access to the Diodaki War mechanic, allowing any of Alexander's former realms to use a brand new Cassus Belli that grants them claims across all of the former Archaeot Empire. But not all of these nations have identical war goals. For example, the Antagonid Kingdom will be forced to conquer Corinthos and defend provinces in Greece, Cyprus, and the Levant. Failing this, their empire will collapse entirely, opening up the region to foreign invasion and greatly changing the course of history. Access to the new Diodaki War Cassus Bellis is only possible when your original ruler is still alive, so be sure to take advantage of this avenue for expansion before it is too late. In addition, a large amount of unique events have been added that appear during the Diodaki Wars, with the potential for Cappadocia to revolt and Thrace having the option to choose between neutrality or joining their Macedonian overlord. On the subject of the Hellenic world, the Menander update is accompanied by the release of the Epirus Flavor Pack DLC. This recently redesigned content pack is available now, and free for players who have already pre-ordered the game. The Epirus pack features a set of new and unique powerful missions for Epirus, along with the inclusion of the Blood of Iocus bloodline for your Basilius. Epirus's new missions focus on boosting the capabilities of your ruler, 
unlocking unique deities, and grants you a variety of events that will allow you to arrange marriages, form alliances, and integrate your Illyrian and coastal neighbors into your realm automatically as subject states. The blood of Iokus brings further bonuses to your court, and permanently increases the martial ability, prominence, and monthly popularity gain of your ruler, on top of a massive plus 5% army morale bonus to the military of your nation. In a method similar to other major Hellenic bloodlines, the blood of Iokus is passed down patrilineally, but you can reclaim this bloodline if it is ever lost by using the Prove Legitimacy scheme mechanic and following the Researching Lineage ambition. But Greece and the Argiad realm are not the only areas of 1.5 that are experiencing an upgrade. The Republic government form has benefited from a massive redesign, and benefits from new mechanics that add depth to political parties and includes the addition of electorate support and approval systems. The most visible new addition is the support in the Senate interface that fills a similar role to the legitimacy and centralization mechanics that monarchies and tribal governments already possess. In this interface, we can see how the various parties will support our actions, and this is largely dependent on how we have acted for or against their interests previously. The Republican government interface has also been entirely redesigned, allowing us to change the term length of our rulers by enacting electoral reforms by passing laws through the Senate. Last but certainly not least, Menander offers a host of quality of life improvements to refine and revamp your in-game experience. Happiness and unrest have been redesigned from the ground up, with unrest no longer being a mechanic that you can ignore without consequences. Many pop classes now require luxury resources to remain content with your rule, with higher strata classes demanding rare and harder to obtain trade goods. Higher strata classes also contribute far more to unrest in your provinces, meaning that a low number of unhappy nobles is more dangerous than a large amount of discontented slaves. This is reflected by the new mechanic of political weight. Ignoring the needs and desires of your population also carries a greatly increased risk of rebellion, with entire provinces dynamically joining revolts when bordering regions of heightened unrest. To combat the increased threat of internal dissidents, forts in 1.5 now provide unrest reduction in the provinces they are constructed and maintained within. These systems greatly increase the realism of your campaigns, forcing you to make strategic decisions to keep your population loyal to your rule. Menander and the 1.5 update is one of the largest and most anticipated updates to arrive to Imperator Rome. If you'd like to learn more about Imperator, I recommend checking out all five parts of this tutorial series to familiarize yourself with the basics of the game. This guide series is made in collaboration with Paradox Interactive and my YouTube channel, Alzebo HD. As always, thank you for watching, and we will see you on the next Imperator video.